John chapter 3. We're going to read verse 31 to verse 36. The title of today's conversation is Spiritual is Christual. Christual is not a word. Is it a word? But it's, I, 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 I coined it. I coined it. I have copyrights on that word. <laughs> I just removed spirit from spiritual and I replaced his words with Christ. And you soon find out what I mean when I say spiritual is Christual. And of course, you know that in that flyer, I put the Christ out in italics so that you know that it's not a real word. If you didn't even know that, there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> Putting it in italics is deliberate because it's not a real word yet. Until I become a Nobel laureate and then I begin to create words and everybody accepts it. So, um, John chapter 3. Verse 31 to 36. A very interesting conversation or narration that the author was given about the words that somebody said. In fact, I think it makes sense that we start from verse 27. John the Baptist, of course, replied. John the Baptist replied, No one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. You yourselves know how plainly I told you, I am not the Messiah. It is the bridegroom. Ah, I am only here to prepare the way for him. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride. And the bridegroom's friend is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. Therefore, I am filled with joy at his success or at his prosperity. Or as its progress. Um, 30. It must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. You know, that, that is the principle of Christian ministry. That the deeper or the more advanced you are in service to God, the, the less of you people must, people must see. Now, I don't mean that you should become unavailable. Is that what I mean? No, that's not what I mean. It's not about unavailability. It means that when you first start ministry, it's going to be a lot about yourself. People who are in debt to you are in debt to your personality at first. But the more you advance in ministry, it becomes less and less of your personality and more and more of the person that you are pushing. It's just that the problem with that is that that might not produce for you a mega church. Praise the Lord. Because the fastest way to a mega church is promoting oneself. So, some people are already offended now. I don't understand it. <laughs> I feel my sister, some people are like, really, you started again. I didn't intend to offend anybody. I'm just telling you what I've seen around. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, 31. He has come. Now, who is speaking here? Who, who is speaking? John. Someone said Jesus. John, John. Even the Bible is written, it's not written in red letter. That, 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 that thing was a cheat. That's how I knew for, <laughs> when I was going up in the faith. Thank God they put Christ's words in some Bibles in red letter. That thing helped me a lot. When it, it's not everything that Christ said. Some of you just want to say, I come and say up for anything. Some of you, uh, he said, he, he has come from above. Uh, he's not Christ that said it, it's John that said it. <laughs> so, John said, he has come. Who is he now? Jesus. Jesus. He has come from above and is greater than anyone else. We are of earth, of the earth, and we speak of earthly things. But he has come from heaven. And is greater than anyone else. Keep going, keep going. We're going to 36. Keep going. He testifies about what he has seen and heard. Where? Where do you see those things and hear them? In heaven, In heaven right? Are, are we together? But how few believe what he tells them? Keep going. Anyone who accepts his testimony can affirm that God is true. All versions say, I think the Living Bible says anyone who accepts testimony accepts that God is a fountain of truth. So one of the versions say anyone who accepts his testimony 
affirm that God is source of truth. Many variations in this particular part. But let's go. Let's go on. It's 34. For he is sent by God. He speaks God's words. For God gives him the spirit without limit. So my husband says, God has poured out the spirit upon him limitlessly. What does the other say about that verse? Any other version you have there? The one whom God has sent to represent him will speak the words of God. For God has poured out upon him the fullness of the Holy Spirit. For God has poured out upon him the fullness of the Holy Spirit without what? Limitation. Praise the Lord. Yes, so let, let's go on. Did he, but, uh, wait, wait. This point out, was it at Jordan that it happened? Mm. I, I'm, I'm asking a question. This, this pouring out without limit, did it happen at Jordan? Was it Jordan that it happened? Uh, all of you are just giving me a guess. No, of course, Can you no. say affirmatively that it happened in Jordan? No. 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 Why? This thing is saying, that, that opinion, I don't think it's too... It, it makes sense, but in context, how? Because he said he came from heaven. heaven. He had, before he came. And I had already been baptized at Jordan now. Do you understand? But I'm, just, I'm saying that because I've, I've heard some people imply that that pouring out happened at Jordan. No, it did not happen at Jordan. He was born of the Spirit. And to be born of the Spirit, for us, is, is an indication of how we became born again. What happened in our spirit, man, right? But for Christ, it's literal. He was not born of the consummation of a man and a woman. The Bible says, the angel told Mary, the Spirit of God shall what? Overshadow you. So, he who is born... Who, who is fathered of the spirit, essentially? Are, are you getting my point? Would you now need to go to a baptism somewhere for the Holy Spirit to be overflowing upon him? I'm asking a simple question. I'm leaving it for your consciences to decide. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Alas, what do we do? Come <laughs> back to you. Come back to me. <laughs> I don't agree that it was Jordan. I do not agree that it was Jordan. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You know, but you know, some things are not especially written. So we cannot, I cannot form a doctrine. Yes. So but we can just think about it. So while I'm telling you my own position now, if I want to be funny, I can just say that I believe, and I, all of you should assess it by force. But the problem also is that the other person that comes to and says the same thing, what ground would I have to say if he says that that's where it happened? Since we don't know for sure, you understand what I'm saying? Everybody's opinion is welcome. We shall know that Jordan, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Abi, his opinion to his words is welcome. That one does not affect our salvation in any way, does it? Does it change the fact that we are not born again? It's when people now begin to say things like, if you cannot just say in your heart that you believe and you are saved, what you do. And that's when me, I was now begin to have problems. Because those ones are expressly what? Written. Praise the Lord. So, um, verse 36, 35, go on, go on. We're going to 36, go on. 35. The Father loves his son and has put everything into his hands. What's the reference to this verse? What's the reference to this verse? 128, verse 20. Yes. No, what's the, what's the clearest? There are, there are other clearer references. Matthew 28, I like it. It says, Oh, I was to be giving you a uh-huh. What other place? The main one that we read. Matthew 11, yeah, verse 28. No, no, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're, you're very close. You're 27. You're very close. I was hoping I was hoping you were going to say, No, 27, because 28 is more. 27. I, I, ah, good, good, good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's in GWO. Speaking of GWO, when we were growing up in the face, <laughs> there was a man, uh, Evans Okonta, our Sunday school superintendent, in church then. One day he asked a question in the Sunday school, and then Kenny stood up. Remember that day now? And he, he pulled out his notes and began to read 
what he had written down. The man is an engineer by profession, but he's, he's, he's one of those guys that made us look like weaklings. He will be quoting at, at chapters. First, but you no, at, at first, you know. Uh, we were then actually, but I mean now, some people are still, some people are just gifted in some areas. I don't have that gift. He will be quoting a whole chapter of Isaiah in his head, and he was, and he was, and he was. Until I got to his head and realized that he's an entrepreneur. All he does all day is cram scriptures. So you don't want to be, even me, I cannot do it right now. So when I want to start competing with that kind of person. But he looked at John Kenny for a long time, and he was so impressed. No man, nobody pleases this man on a normal day. What's impressing him like this? He said, he shows you've been listening to me. You have a note. You have something to refer to. You cannot compare this young man to many of you in this place. Because he has something to refer to. So when you say, oh, gee, we will, you've forgotten that you were one of the people that was commended for, G, for reading from your notes. Suddenly, your sire is also somebody else now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'd rather have you read from that note. My problem now is those who don't have notes, who never read it. Joe. That's my own problem. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's the, you know that someone wants to start that nonsense in university. We stopped it. Is it, 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 it submit your notes? Like, submit what? We escaped all that in secondary school. So I'm going to do it again here. Yeah. I can't believe that happened to you guys. So, I, I, I'm glad you guys know the reference to verse 35. I did. We are, we are preparing our minds for something. Praise the Lord. 36 now. That's what we are going to. I hope those all are listening to us. And anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life. Anyone who doesn't obey the Son can you see the kind of words that are used in this NLT? Some of you, eh, 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 all, this, all this NLT, all these versions, they are too, they are too simple. They, they, don't, they don't carry the weight. That's what some people have told me. Some pastors have told me that. See what NLT is saying. Anyone who doesn't believe the Son will never experience eternal life. How affirmative can that be? Praise the Lord. He says, we what? Never. I was listening to a song the other day, one Muslim singer. Ojo Agbende, Ojo Akiyamo. And I, in my mind, I was like, ah, how I wish you guys knew that on that day, nothing will happen. The only thing you get is judgment. What does that mean? Oh, what does that mean? The, the day of resurrection. They don't have a day of resurrection. No, they do. They believe so. They do. They believe that. There's Akiyamo. Akiyamo is there. And so, of course, no, they won't. I know. I know. They, they won't. So the worst case of people believe that they're not. You know, you know there's some people that don't even care at all. You know, some people don't care at all. No, no, no. That's not about the general world. It's now unfortunate for those who now believe that there's something and are going the wrong way. Be careful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, all we have read now, you will not believe. Where I'm getting at with this verse, you guys not believe. If I tell you what the Lord told me from this chapter, we believe. We are. We believe the truth. He said, "What is it? Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. Try us. Try us. <laughs> nice. But yeah, we will not believe. <laughs> Go back to verse thirty-one. Thirty-one. I want to first of all give you an idea of the person that is talking, John the Baptist. Who is John the Baptist? This is the guy that showed up, the forerunner of Christ. More details about him tells us that he's the guy, the guy that was wearing uh, camel skin. I was looking, look, and you know, Christ was saying it that John came not drinking any wine. Look at this. No, no cost. No, I have it too. I don't like it. Can we, can, can we focus here? Can we focus here? Which one is that? You know, some of you who eat locust beans, some of you who eat locust beans need to know how it is made. So, he's the guy that is eating wild locusts. 
even though I rather have that right now than some of the fish that they are shipping in from China to us. You know? And then this guy is eating honey and is wearing camel skin. That's the guy that is saying what you're about to read right now. And there's a reason why I am giving you guys this profile. Because this is the guy that Jesus says what? is the greatest of all who lived before those who entered into the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, essentially what Christ was saying, that everybody under the law, this guy is like number one of everybody. No matter how extraordinary you were. And I believe the words of Christ when he says this kind of stuff. But those who, are, those who enter into the kingdom, they are above the guy. Christ said those words, not me. Are we together? Now, this fellow is about to say something. He says, he has come from heaven, from above. And he's greater than anyone else. We. Do you see the word we that you use there? It is say I. Do you hear what he said? It didn't say I. He said what? We. we. Meaning myself and everybody. He didn't even say you to the audience I was speaking to. He said we, myself. And everybody else that stands like me as a prophet, we, because when he says, and we speak, that means it's not the audience. Yeah. He's talking about people who have been what? Speaking as oracles of God. That's what he's talking about. And he says, we are of what? The earth. And we speak of earthly things. But he, are you seeing the contrast? It is not just myself. It is we, all of us, before Christ. We know. But Christ made it clear that he's part of everybody else. And he himself too is admitting that he's part of everybody else. Praise the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, this John is saying that there is a cap that has been placed on him and everybody else like him. And there's a limitation of their insight into God. Do you agree with that? Why is there a cap on them? Because of the fact that we are of earth. I'm guessing somewhere. John is admitting that there is a limitation placed on them by virtue of the fact that they are sourced from earth. But this Jesus Christ has no limitation on him because of where he came from. Before I even go on, let me first give you the first application of what I just said now. Christ was talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, that's in chapter. Remember what he was saying? Go back, Pastor Larry. Find it for us. John 3. How did Christ, how did Christ describe being born again? Verse 5. Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans reproduce human life. Many prophets from the earth reproduce prophetic life, which is earthly life. Anything that comes from the earth, humans, dust of the earth, remember the beginning? Anything that comes from the earth produces what? Earthly life. Are you getting my point? By virtue, of the, by virtue of where we have come from, every opinion we give is colored because of where we have come from. We don't have the clearest understanding of heavenly matters because we came from what? Earth. But there is one who has come from what? Heaven. And he has no limitation whatsoever into the things that well, into the things that what? Wait. Let me repeat my line. We have a limitation according to John. John was saying they had a limitation about insight into things about heaven. Because they are from the earth. But the person that has come from the earth has no limitation when it comes to insights to things about 
about heaven. Wait, let me say it again. Let me say it again. John said that we who are of the earth have a limitation above our heads about the things of heaven because we have come from earth. But the person that has come from heaven has no limitation in terms of things about heaven because that's where he is coming from. Do you get that clearly now? Some of, some, I, I wish somebody was already excited about where I'm getting at. Now, if Jesus now said in John chapter 3, earlier in verse 5, that anything that is born of the... Uh, human gives back to human life. Spirit gives back to spirit life. Meaning that anybody that is not given back to by the spirit cannot enter into the kingdom of God, which is what it means when we say, when we say being born again. Yes. Ask yourself, first of all, the kind of access that John will have into spiritual things. Is it like your own? Why? First of all, because we have been born now of the Spirit. So the new life that we live now did not come from where? The earth. It came from where? Above. Did you get that clarity now? So the things that affected John the Baptist and people before him, both causes and all these things. Can it affect you? Why? Because unlike them, you, the life in you, did not come from here. Even though at one point it came from earth, but you became born again. Born of the Spirit. So the new life you have inside of you now is from heaven. And so that life is governed by principles of heaven. And there is no curse in heaven. Praise the Lord. That's what, that was, that's what I'm going to. I just mentioned it in passing. No. <laughs> so, everything that comes from the earth not only belongs to the earth, it's governed by the earth. And everything that comes from heaven is not only belong, does not only belong to heaven, but it's governed by heaven. Let's read some Bible passages that can give us more insight. John 1 18. John 1 18. The uh, Bible says, no one has ever seen God, but the unique one, one capital letter O, who is himself God, is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. Can you see what John is saying? That's John, the author of the book of John. Praise the Lord. He's saying now that no one has ever seen God, but there is one who came from God. And that's what he, John Baptist is affirming, that since he came from God, he has unfettered access to what? To the knowledge of, of who? Of God. That we cannot by any chance have because of where we have what? Come from. Yes, we have some knowledge of God. But compared to what this guy has, it's like comparing one to one thousand. Are you with me? So I'm, 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 going, I'm going to give you an example. I have watched a lot of American films. In fact, I feel like I've lived in America before. Sometimes. God, I've never been to America, of course. And I'm not, I'm not letting this wide. Praise God. Now, imagine Pastor Kunle, who has been in America for over a year now, or so, or more. Ah, uh, yes. Coming to Nigeria now. And then, I want to begin to argue with him about American politics. For what I heard on CNN. A colored station. I, I, I was together. We will not begin to argue. We will say, ah. We will say, okay, okay. Thank you. Arguing with me is a proper definition of wasting of time. You know why? Because he has just come from America. And now I'm just here watching news. And the, per and the perversion of news happening in Nigerian TV stations. That is not even called. This one's even about our own issues. Even about, they'll be talking in jargons. And we can be word for word. Praise the Lord. So he's saying that this Jesus came from God. And so he has unrestricted access to knowledge about what? God. Are we together? Are we together, guys? So a person that wrote an autobiography and a person that lived with the person, who knows more? 
See, no matter how much you interview people about somebody, you cannot have some certain experience. For example, the person that knows the, that lives with the person will tell you when he wakes up in the morning, there's a way he carries his cup of tea. That detail, autobiography cannot get it. They can only just narrate it. Yes, that's if they interview the person. But even if the person describes the experience. No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that being the person involved. The person himself. That's the person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But even if the person that lives with him told them how he carried the cup, can you describe how he's, the man smells? Do you know that everybody has a unique smell? No matter how body, body spray they use. Are we together? Do, do you understand know what I'm saying? When my mom left, when I was like nine or ten, for many months, there's some clothes around the house that belong to her that we just put in our nose like this. You remember, they, and we just were smelling her, just to remind ourselves about her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What's the year now? I want to get that, guys. Let's go to John four five. Ah, first John four five. 1 John 4, verse 5. 1 John 4, verse 5. I, I don't want to rush this conversation because there's a lot to say. 1 John 4, 5. Is it on the screen? Okay, no, it's not. Those people who belong to this world, ah, sorry. Those people belong to this world. So they speak from the world's what? Viewpoint. And the world does what? Listens to them. Can you see the connection? Go to the next verse. But we belong to who? To God. And those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not what? Listen to God. Can you see the contrast there? And this, this opinion of John further helps me understand what John the Baptizer was talking about when he says, Our opinion is limited. Because we are from the earth. But this person that I'm talking about, whatever he says to you, just know that he came straight from source. Are we together? Let's see John 3 verse 6. I just want to read a few verses, because as we, as we read these verses, something is happening in our, in our spirit man that is beyond... No, let's see verse 10 to 13. Jesus replied, verse 10, that's John 3, 10. You are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things. I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? But the Son of Man has come down from heaven. Do you, do you hear those words? See Christ telling Nicodemus that, okay, what I'm even saying, that it isn't sounding spiritual to you. It's not even yet the heavenly stuff. We are still in preliminary. We are not even getting, we are in pre-sermon. We never enter sermon. Let's even get to conclusion. And you are, you are scattered like this. You don't even understand what I'm talking about. Uh, we have already for without a moon starting salmon. Praise the Lord. That's what Christ was saying. You guys don't yet know where I'm going with all, all I'm saying. We will soon get there. So, the fact is that Christ did not come from earth. He was conceived by the spiritual impartation of God upon Mary. So naturally, his life and opinions are not shaped by earthly realities. Because this is not where he is from. That's why when he was in the temple at 12 and the mother and father came, he told them, he said, ah, why are you guys stressing like this? Don't you know that I must be in my father's house? That opinion is not earthly. You know why it's not earthly? An earthly perspective tells you that when your parents are looking for you, what should you do? You apologize. But he wasn't speaking from an earthly perspective. Praise the Lord. He saw life differently. 
because of where he is from. And he lived in that constant reality that I don't belong here. I didn't come from here. And that's how ambassadors behave too. No matter how much you enforce dress code in a country, an ambassador is not bound to wear those clothing. You know why? Because even though his office is here, that office space is not your country. That land that he's on is not your country. That, that embassy is another country in your country. So, and in that embassy, he's not bound to any of your, of your laws. Even the car that they put the plate number of uh, diplomatic, what's it called? That car, inside that car, on the road, is in a different country. He's not bound by the rules of that country. And that's why even if you kill someone, they have to take him back to his country to go and try him. Is that real? Praise the Lord. Are we together? And so, even when Nigerians look at overseas, you know, they really don't change. They go and they come back. And they're the same persons. No, it's not about, I don't know the Nigerians go overseas and come back and come and be driving anywhere on the streets in Lagos. Even though they drove normally as human beings so, so in those countries. The moment they land at the airport back in Nigeria, they begin to drive like people that have never traveled before. Same people that are overseas that cannot play music above how many decibel will land in Nigeria and the first day they arrive, they throw parties and they disturb everybody in the streets. You ask yourself. So the, so the question then is, nothing changed about you. You just went to another country. And that is as much real too about spirituality. Praise the Lord. Be not what? Conform to this world. Why? Because you don't belong in this world. No matter how real your life here in this world is to you. Hmm. Now, when people go and talk about spiritual matters, this is where I, this, I'm going to enter into the mode now. When people want to talk about spiritual stuff, they abandon Christ. You know what they go to? They go to the prophets. I'm telling you what I've seen from experience as a minister. When we want to begin to talk about mysteries, they begin to go to Zechariah, Ezekiel, all those mysteries, mysteries, mysteries stuff. Because those kinds of those stuff are impressive. People that had visions, impaired vision, all their visions were narrated. I'm sure that I didn't get to everyone. That some things that they narrated didn't happen the way they said it happened. Some things that they said they saw, that is like, you know, that is not. Even now, we know now that some of the things that they say are more clear to us now. Praise the Lord. People who want to talk about spiritual stuff, they go to the prophets. Because the prophets are believed to be the ones that had interaction with God. Or angels. Why? Because they sound spiritual. Actually, they've been deceived. They've been deceived. They've been deceived because Christ does not sound spiritual. What are things that you hear Christ talking about? The kingdom of heaven. Which is supposed to be the most spiritual stuff. But because he talks about it so casually, sometimes, the way he talks about it, he uses earthly stories to describe them. He talks about things like hatred and love. In fact, some people even say that Christ was a moralist of a sort. <laughs> but you see, the problem is this. Yes. So people, people, when we talk about demonology, they begin to tell you they are talking about deep stuff, mysteries, and they begin to have this proud look. But you see, the problem is that Christ cannot sound spiritual to carnal ears. That's the problem. Christ cannot sound spiritual I want to, add that to carnal Christ, ears. Christ and those who preach Christ will not always appear spiritual to carnal ears. See, mm. I wrote it down here. I said, for some of us, because of the eternal life we have, the words of Christ sound spiritual, but we take it for granted. We don't know that it sounds spiritual because of the life in us. 
for many others, it comes weighty. But because of the fact that we have the life of Christ, the language he is speaking to us in is natural. Let me explain to you what the Lord told me. He said, oh, when you want to learn a new language, everything they are saying looks the, only, the people that speak language tell you, yeah, ordinary house, I cannot speak. Because house is natural to them. But for you, you are learning it. So the people that can speak Hausa or Yoruba or Igbo that you want to learn, are we together? Yes, consider their language as just normal. They don't consider it to be Jin Jin. But you that you want to learn it, when you want to speak it, you have a sense of pride. I can speak Hausa. But the average Hausa on the street doesn't think of Hausa as a language to be proud about. Because it's just Hausa that you grew up with. That's how spirituality is. Those who are truly spiritual, who have been interacting with Christ, who came from heaven, don't consider themselves to be spiritual. You know why? Because spiritual is natural for them. Is anyone confused? But those who are carnal think of spirituality as something to brag about. Because for them, it's the once in a wild thing. It's not natural for them. I hope you understand what I just said now. It says become natural. When, when someone keeps speaking to you in a certain language and you are able to speak that language or understand it, does it carry any weight anymore? Does the language now become... Because you're not having to think so hard to decipher it. But for those who spend longer deciphering it, but then they decipher it, they have some sense of pride. Like, ah! Ha! Um, uh, if you know how long I prayed to understand this, where are some other persons? Ah, oh, okay. Uh, ah. Yes, I understand what you're saying now. Because there's a work that has been done in a person's life. But you know, the problem is that many of us take it for granted. Many of us, people approach us with problems. And they are looking forward to hearing from us solutions. But because we don't consider the words that are inside of us to be weighty, we don't think we can solve their problems by just speaking to them what is natural to us because of our spiritual states. Are you with me? Sometimes I've said some things and people are like, wow, and I'm like, what's wow there? This is also running in my head now. You don't understand. Some things you say, people are like, man, that's deep. They're like, what's deep there? <laughs> this is the counsel I think about every time now. That's the that Christ was sharing his people. They were like, I don't, even tell you I don't even tell you telling you of, of spiritual stuff. Example. You are looking confused. If I'm not beginning to tell you deep stuff, where will you be? I, I, praise the Lord. And you see, the things that are deep. Sorry. You yes. Know what I realized? Yes. That's why some of us will go to a meeting. Someone will share a supposed dream. You will like. Mm, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm like. What is the mm here now? Talking about some. We have not even gotten to the deep stuff. What did you see? I didn't get. Please do not pass that. Like, what is the mm about that? I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, and and that's and, and the the danger for mm. those of us mm. who have become familiar mm. with mm. spirituality mm. is that we take it for granted. Mm. Some of these people, they will package themselves, do photo shoots over those triplets of spiritual insight. I mean, trickles. Ah, that was Steve. Like, like, like. What's going on today? It drops. Some of trickles. Oh my God. Some of you sitting down here, the kind of access you have. To spiritual revelation. Some of you that you are hyped about online don't have half. You know how I know? Because you have been exposed to Christ. And Christ is the definition of spirituality, not the prophets. Even Jonah to say, 
everything we say here is earthly because our mind is earthly uh, and you know what this person is talking about this guy I want to go 100 terabytes mm -hmm. anything he says the download speed is not even 5G. I only read all the seeing God in 8K or 16K. Praise the Lord. They don't download stuff. They just, you know, it's 5G. It's not download again. I don't know why people can call 5G download. Because download used to be 3G when it downloads, it loads down. It comes down. But with 5G, it's like you're, you're just clicking on your phone. I who have not seen it. It's what I watch you. Not like not, we're, we're not seeing 5G until we die. Because <laughs> even the 4G you gave us, it's not, it's not even 4, it's maybe like 2 point something G. No, no. 3.1. Is this 4G now, mind? 3.1. This is a subversion of 4G. Well, Praise the Lord. Let's go on. Let's go on a little deeper. Open your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians 2. We're going to read from verse 6. We might, not, we might not end this here, but we'll continue later. Ah, Holy Spirit. One body, we are in a roll, oh, praise God. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure you guys understand what I mean. Hmm. <laughs> verse 6. Yet, now, this, this is Paul speaking, writing now to the church in Corinth. He says, Yet, that yet now is coming as a result. This yet is coming on the heels of him telling them that when he came to them, he didn't try to speak with impressive words. He tried to speak the ordinary words because he didn't want their faith to rest on what? On men's wisdom. But on what? But on the power of God. Are we together? Now, he now goes to verse 6. He says, won't get me water. He goes to verse 6. He says, use, use my cup. In verse 6, he says, yet... When I was among, when I am, when I am among mature believers, so yes, meaning in contrast, yes, even though I don't use, I don't try to use impressive words. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when I'm among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom. When I'm among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom. And then he quickly corrects himself that, or makes it clearer that, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world. So when I say I speak word of wisdom, don't think I'm, I'm trying to be Mahatma Gandhi. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I'm not an emotional speaker. I'm not talking about the wisdom that is commonplace with the rulers of this world. See, guys, without trying to be um, cynical, when you hear some world leaders speak, you will be impressed. What did I say? When you hear some world leaders speak, oh my God, oh my God. I, I'm not, I don't know about presidents or prime ministers. When you hear some captains of industry talk from the wealth of books they have read, you be like, ah, ah how's he gonna learn all these things? Just know what I'm saying. But that is not what we're talking about here. And that's what Paul was trying to clarify that I'm not talking about the kind of wisdom that is common among the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. Verse 7. No. The wisdom we speak of is the mystery of God. His plan that was previously hidden, even though he made it for our ultimate glory before the world began. Verse 8. But the rulers of this world have not understood it. Let's go on. Verse 10. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. These things by what? His spirit. his spirit. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. Are you following to this point? Yes. Now, the next verse. No one can know a person's thoughts 
except that person's own spirit. It's an analogy now. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit. So we can know the wonderful thing that God has freely given to us. Are we together, guys? Now, only those who have the spirit of Christ or the spirit, the Holy Ghost, can discern the things of Christ. Now, when you read this verse, you will hear the word revealed to us by his spirit. I will soon stop. Well, I, just, let me, I want to stop here. When you, when you hear, when you read this verse, what, you, what will you hear? Ah, the, the, the spirit, the spirit, the spirit, the spirit. Right? But well, you see, don't be mistaken. The person that was saying that God has revealed these things to us by his spirit. And what things? The deep secrets of God. Right? When you read all these things, if you make the mistake to think that you can now isolate the spirit from Christ, you're going to land in a total misunderstanding of this verse. You know why? You know why? John 15, John 16, verse 12 to 15. That's, that's how you understand what Paul was really saying here. John 16, verse 12. There's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. Go on. When the spirit of truth comes, when the spirit, that person that Paul was talking about, he will what? Guide you into all truth. That's what he will do. He will not speak of his own, but will tell you what he has what? Heard. As you are hearing, as you are reading this thing that I just said now, flash your mind. Don't, don't change it to flash your mind to verse 11. No one, no, verse 10. For the Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secret. That's what it means. He will not speak of his own. He's searching out things. It's not his own words he's speaking. Whose words he's speaking? The words of who? Words of who? The words of who? Of Christ, of God. So in that text, you see God there, but Christ told us already before he left that when the Spirit of truth comes, he will not tell you anything of his own self. He will, he will take from me and do what? And show you. So that deep secret that the Spirit is showing to those who are spiritual is coming from who? It's coming from who? From Christ. Not from some imaginary God somewhere. And so, when we know already that the Spirit only reveals to us what Christ says, the shortest cut to spirituality is to find out what Christ says. Because what Christ says is the true definition of spirituality. And so, spiritual is Christual. So those who claim spiritual will not be able to do so outside of Christ. No matter how much they try. And you see, because Christ doesn't sound spiritual, many people don't identify with him. We're going to pray. I'm going to hold off some more thoughts until um, Wednesday. Well, let me go to the line that we're going to that we're going to make us pray. That we're going to pray with. That's going to result in prayer. See what John said in John chapter three. Verse thirty-two. John three thirty-two. Everybody wants to go. He testifies about what he has seen and heard. From where? Where, where, is, where do you get this from? From heaven. Now, the last line. But how few believe what he tells them? That's the problem. That's the problem, guys. All those words you hear Christ speaking that you think are just ordinary uh, uh, moral words. He's revealing the character of heaven. He's describing the culture of heaven. Those things that he said, don't hate. Love your enemies. 
pray in this manner. All those things that, that are just ordinarily like, children from so the school class read ups. People now say, when you want to get to the deeper stuff, go, go on. Do you understand what I'm saying? All those things are actually the definition of spiritual because what he was doing in those places was he was describing the character of the kingdom, the culture of the kingdom, how people behave in heaven. He was describing how the father behaves. And when somebody describes how God works slowly, and they carry Bible instead of iPads, those stuff have got nothing to do with spiritual. A person that is wearing swimsuits and surfing on the beach can be far more spiritual than a person wearing suits. You know the difference? If you know the word of Christ and you obey him. Praise the Lord. And here at one body, we will never confuse it. You might wear suits. That's, not, that's all spirituality for us. Christ is spirituality. Why don't you pray and speak to God? Lord, is there any way I have taken for granted the reality that you are the definition of spiritual? Have I sought to be something else other than you in the pursuit of spirituality? Lord, I repent. I want you to pray wherever you are. Some of you are far more spiritual than you know. But because you don't have a hype around yourself, you don't believe it. Some of you, the words that have been spoken into your subconscious have performed far more spiritual surgeries in your life. But because you are looking for an emotional evidence to prove it, a tangible physical evidence to prove it, you don't accept that God is at work in your life. Some of you come and ask, Pastor, I want to be more spiritual. You know my answer to you? Learn about Christ more. That is the key to spiritual. Why don't you pray and speak to God wherever you are, here or online. Talk to God wherever you are. Talk to God. Some of you have been called to become makers of disciples. You tell yourself, I'm not spiritual enough. I don't know enough. Because, because you heard somebody talking about Ezekiel and uh, Zechariah, that is what you define as spirituality. When the words that Christ has spoken to you, that is overflowing inside of you, can turn anybody around you into a spiritual human being, if only you knew. If only you knew. If only you knew. Why don't you talk to God? The sons of prophets thought they were more important than the disciples of Christ because the sons of Christ were not carrying on their head fasting and all these things. But the access they had to God was, was far more. Christ told Peter, he said, flesh and blood did not reveal these things to you, but my Father in heaven. How much more spiritual can a man get? When the Father or the Spirit, no, he said, the Spirit, was the Spirit? He said, my Father in heaven, yes. When the Father begins to reveal things to a person, how much more spiritual can he get? It's not about what you wear or where you go. It's not about how long you prayed on the mountain. It's about your willingness to become a disciple of the truly spiritual one. The one who himself is spirit. He says, what I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Why don't you pray to God? I say, Lord, I have underestimated your words. I have underrated your work in my life. I too, by your grace, have become spiritual. Not by what I do, but because of who I identify with. Why don't you pray? Why don't you pray tonight? Talk to God. Some of you have doubted whether or not there's anything going on in your life. The words of Christ that are living inside of you are the definition of spiritual. And those words are powerful enough to produce tremendous results in your life. If only you knew. If only you knew. If only you knew what God is doing in your life. If only you knew. If only you knew what was in your life. If only you knew. If only you knew what God is doing in your life. 
If only you knew. And stop believing people who pray for 10 hours and tell you that they are spiritual by that. Some of you have believed those lies. Lord, I refuse to believe a lie in the name of Jesus. Is it, is it bad to pray? No, it is not. But the definition of spirituality is not in how long you pray. It is in how, how much obedience to Christ a man has. Why don't you pray and speak to God? Lord, I have believed liars and charlatans in the past. I choose not to believe them anymore. Instead, I believe Christ. Who is, the, who is spirit himself? Pray to God wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Talk to God wherever you are. Talk to God wherever you are. And I will test, will test no more. And all who search will find what their souls long for. Some of you have been longing to be able to say, to, to say you, you have access to the spiritual. You've always had access to it, but you didn't know what spiritual meant. You miss the meaning of spiritual. That's why you keep second guessing yourself. God has deposited capacities inside of you. Some of you have spiritual gifts. But you are in places where they are pushing you down and telling you that you are not ready. You are not ready. You are not ready. Today, you express a deliverance in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And I will test, will test no more. And I will search, will find what their souls long for. The world will try, but can never feel. So leave it all behind and come to the well. Jesus said, the gifts I give to you, this life will become inside of you a wellspring. You will drink once and then you will not have to go and look for drink again. Some of you are still looking for drink everywhere. It's because you have not tasted of living water. If you have tasted of living water, you don't need any man anyway to give you water again. Because where you are, it should be welling up from inside of you. Pray. I want you to pray. You say pray, you know. I know that you're full of love beyond measure. Your joy is going to flow like a stream in the desert. Soon all the world will see living water is found in me because you've come to the well. Father, we appreciate you tonight. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. See, if you understood the definition of spirituality, you will know that when you give to God, it is more about the state of your heart than the value of what you give to God. What that now means also is not that you now perpetually stay in giving small because they said, is that, as long as I give with my heart, you will not be able to continue to convince yourself that that tiny bit you are giving is what is really said of your heart. Do you hear what I just said now? At some point, that tiny bit is, con you, is everything. But as you grow in the Lord, you begin to understand, you, you begin to tell you that that tiny bit you are giving is not the definition of the state of your heart. You are giving grudgingly, eventually. So now I want you to give from your heart. I want you to give walking out of this door, not feeling that somebody robbed you, or that you're under, or that give. Wherever you are, if you have offerings, why don't you send it in? Send it in via digital platform. If you have cash, which we don't really encourage much, but if you have it, why not? Why don't you give tonight? In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, so, I want to say to you guys that are listening online, I hope you're still there, that um, if you want to come in here physically, you can come in here. We are meeting currently at the One Body Music Experience Center here on 30 McNeil Street, Sabo Yaba. Um, Saturday, 4 p.m. and um, Wednesday, what time? 6 p.m. You can come in physically. 
If you don't know how to get here, let us know. We'll direct you on how to get here. We are, at least we, we still have room for uh, over 20 persons. About what? Yes, about, about um, yeah, over 20 persons in this room. Uh, about 30 or so. So come around if, if you so will to. Uh, is there any announcement I'm missing? Is there any announcement I'm missing? All right. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you. We came to the well, and I feel full. Because living water is found only in you. Lord, my hope is that I will not live anything less than your desire for me in Jesus' name. Amen. For everyone listening, that's what I desire. That none of us will live less than God's agenda for us in Jesus' name. Amen. That we will not be confined to average in the name of Jesus. Amen. But we will live fully for Christ. Amen. Because we are spiritual in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, everyone who is sick in his body, I remind you that it's just because of your body. But the Lord is taking care of it now in the name of Jesus. Any one of us who is broke right now and is hard working, I remind you, it's just a phase. It shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord shall bless what is in your hands in the name of Jesus. It will cost you increase because of his own personal agenda in the name of Jesus. And it will cause your heart not to be proud, but to understand that you can be rich towards him in the name of Jesus. It will cause your heart to understand that security cannot be found in money in the name of Jesus. For those of us who are single and are ready to make the move to settle down in a marriage, in a, in, yes, in a marriage, Lord, I pray for them that you open our eyes and our hearts to that which God has prepared for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will not run too fast for God in Jesus' name. Amen. And we will not be too slow when God is nudging us in the name of Jesus. Amen. For those of us who desire the fruit of the womb, I believe in my heart that Samuel is coming forth in Jesus' name. Amen. And the delay you have experienced is because of the hand of God upon your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. And your womb is opened. O oh, woman, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Lord give life to your eggs, O oh, man, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. God bless you all, guys.